Hi. If you've been outside lately, which is pretty much everybody, and it doesn't matter where you live on the earth, if you're in the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, doesn't matter, you're probably starting to wonder what is going on with our weather patterns? Why do we swing from very, very, from much warmer conditions, warmer than we would expect at a given time of year, in a, in a given date or season? much, much warmer to much, much colder to much, much warmer, you know, precipitation patterns are changing. Everything seems to be topsy-turvy. Everything with weather seems to be upside down these days. And I'm going to talk about this, talk about some of the main reasons for this. I mean, you've probably heard that the jet streams are slower and wavier and causing these weather extremes. I've talked about this a lot. But there's other things going on. There's interactions going on between the lower atmosphere called the troposphere and the upper atmosphere called the stratosphere, um, the next layer up above. And I'm going to talk about these interactions and how we're getting these, these feedbacks to completely disrupt patterns around the globe. So if you're not following me on Twitter, um, I highly recommend that you do it. I'm always posting about climate and renewable energy and weather and extreme events and politics and stuff like that. So at Paul H. Beckwith is my Twitter handle. Okay, so I'm just going to show you some of the things that are sort of been, you know, um, that I've been uh, talking about. You know, I always used to think that universities um, would be an area would, would be an organization or an entity that would, you know, really be concerned about climate change and, you know, make huge improvements to educate the public and so on. But, you know, we just don't see that. I mean, the number of people, the number of people that talk to the public about the, ex about the weather extremes and, cli and climate change and all of the, you know, the reasons for why things are happening and what we need to do, are just not nowhere sufficient, not enough. There's no sense of urgency in these organizations. And this article here is a hard-hitting article on the nature of universities, education, teachers, students, and administrators. Universities are really, they've become corporations, really. You know, they have their agendas. And it's, it's uh, anyway, re re read this article. That's probably the topic of a whole separate video. So... Um, there's lots of stuff uh, being tweeted out about, you know, this is the temperature in the Arctic from the beginning of the year in 2018. This is a long-term average. This is what we're seeing now. I mean, I'll talk in detail about this. Um, massive hurricane force, low pressure, 944 hexapascals. That would be like category three is 940 to 960. So low pressure area, southeast of Greenland. Um, you know, Europe is going to go into this deep freeze, okay? Beginning of the year, we had this uh, trough of the jet stream covering North America. So the Arctic air, the Arctic, a lot of the air in the Arctic came south over North America. Put us in a deep freeze, the Arctic was much warmer than normal. Um, now that jet stream, and, and of course Europe was much warmer than normal, um, you know, for that time period, but the pattern has shifted. So the trough of the jet stream has shifted so that it's only covering the western part of North America now. So the eastern part is going into much warmer conditions. Uh, you know, like in Ottawa, for example, daily highs are from 5 to 10 degrees these days, and it, it should be minus 5 or mi minus 10 degrees Celsius. So you know, I look at, out on the long-term forecast and every day is above zero in, in Ottawa. Um, you know, like crazy stuff is happening. Pick your region and I'm sure you've got some story or anecdote or, you know, you, you're, you have concerns about what's going on. So what's happening is um, the pattern has shifted so Europe is going to get the deep freeze. Um, you know, we instead, in go, instead of going from uh, very, very cold temperatures over North America with the trough, trough covering us, when it shifted, the eastern coast of the U.S. has been setting record temperatures. It's been getting record precipitation over a wide area, bringing river levels up. 
um, causing lots of flooding. So there's all kinds of stuff going on, but it's not just in North America, it's not just in the Northern Hemisphere, it's all over the entire planet. And the key, the key thing is the Arctic. What happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. The Arctic is experiencing unbelievably warm temperatures and you know, it's in the winter, sea ice should be go growing, it's dark there, but it's reaching temperatures above zero, ice is decreasing in the Bering Strait, it's being pushed, uh, the ice is being compressed by, I'll, I'll, I'll get into the details of this, I'm doing this a series of videos here. Um, so here's some of the river flooding, these are 575 total gauges, 30 major flooding, those are the purples, 129 the red or moderate flooding, minor flooding the orange, and near flood stage the the uh, yellow. I mean, okay, this is, um, you know, I'll go into some of the more details on the Arctic ice, etc., but this shows you the daily mean Arctic temperature. This is the 1958-2002 mean, okay, the bluish line. This is what's going on in 2018. Look where we are here, setting setting records. Um, yeah, I I you know I have a wide variety of stuff. It's mostly focused on climate. Like you remember Hurricane Maria it took out Puerto Rico 156 days ago. More than 500,000 people still without power. Tens of thousands still without clean water. It's still a humanitarian emergency. A lot of the other Caribbean islands haven't even recovered. And, um, you know, there's, people think of a collapse of civilization, you know, will it happen, will it not, is it possible? What we're seeing is, we're seeing a culling of the weaker places, the more exposed places, the unlucky places, I call it the climate casino. They're being hammered and they're not necessarily being able to recover because climate change is costing society trillions and trillions of dollars at this stage. This is, this sort of hits home here, this is an interesting, graph here where it shows the different scenarios with low emissions you know and, and high emissions which are the current emissions and you can put on you know where you know your life cycle your mom's born here you're born here daughter's born child finishes high school you know and it really puts it into context what kind of a life are we having for our children and grandchildren there you know generational equity is very very important and we're acting today, adults are acting today as if, you know, this is it, you know, the future is not important. We don't care what happens, what kind of a world we leave our kids, what our grandkids, you know, so trash the place. You know, if there's no respect for future generations and you would act exactly as we're acting. And I don't think most people think that way. Um, so I, you know, I, I do a, this is a simulation of a, of, of a, a steel ball falling on sand. So I do all kinds of stuff here. Um, you know, some controvert, like here's a bearing and sea, you know, this is this year, dropping off a cliff. Um, the Rideau Canal, we have the Rideau Canal in Ottawa and this, the, the season length and the number of skating days is just dropping continuously. You know, we have something, a winter festival called Winterlube, Winterlude, which is, uh, an interesting, um, you know, we like there's all kinds of activities and stuff, um, and it's going to be Waterloo soon. Um, so, so uh, you know, this is uh, because the polar vortex is broken down. We're getting a lot more ozone getting up into the Arctic this year. There's lots of sort of spin-off effects. Bering lost half its sea ice um, in less than two weeks, and so on. There's all kinds of stuff here. You know, CO two still continues to increase, 408 parts per million. Okay, so anyway, have a look at um, my uh, Twitter page and uh, I'll make sure I put all these videos, you know, I put, I put all my videos up. I have a website, paulbeckwith.net, check that out too. But let's, let's get on to, to uh, what's happening. So this is the, if you Google climate reanalyzer and mouse over um, pick daily summary, just click daily summary, and then you can see these sort of things. So you mouse over here, this is a two meter temperature anomaly. So look at the Arctic, this area here, 30 degrees Celsius warmer than the long-term average. Um, we've got this trough over, over the west of North America, 
a ridge coming up here over the east so record warm temperatures very cold temperatures arctic super warm and the cold air that has is being displaced out of the arctic down to here and also a lot of it is heading to europe europe's going into a deep freeze in the next little while and this is the um this is these are the the arctic 5.9 degrees celsius above the long-term average Okay, and this is another view of it showing the, uh, you know, the super warming here. The ocean's very warm off the east coast. The Arctic is hugely warm and other parts of Asia, India, Africa, very warm. Of course, Australia is having its own problems here. Okay, and we're going into this, this blob of cold air is moving over into Europe. We're going into a, a freeze. Okay, so this is what's happening. So, of course, this heat in the Arctic, now Google Arctic sea ice graphs, this heat in the Arctic is doing a number on the um, sea ice. If you look at here, this is the Arctic sea ice extent. Any area of the ocean with at least 15% sea ice. And this is, the this is the average from 1981 to 2010, the gray line. The, the gray area is two standard deviations. Um, this is the, the record minimum year, 2011, 2012, before, and look where we are, like we've dropped, we're dropping off a cliff, we're much lower, so all of these graphs from different institutions and stuff show the same sort of thing. Um, what else is happening? Okay, uh, I'll just go down here, there's all kinds of data here. One of the things, this is a movement of the, of the ice, the ice speed and drift. So the arrows in the direction. So there's arrows, big arrows coming here, the red area, very fast uh, ice being pushed into this region of the Bering Strait and melted out. On this side, there's a low pressure area um, here. So that there's a cyclone coming around here and the ice is being whipped and pushed out into the Atlantic where we're also losing it. So that's these things are contributing to the record lows that we're seeing um, and there's all kinds of other information here um, and there's very good sites so this is total precipitable water and we see these fingers going up okay these fingers which and over here these sort of things they sort of they're they're warm because they're from closer to the equator they're also laden with moisture, hot air holds more water vapor, and then they're going um, down to, they're going closer to the poles, these atmospheric rivers. And I'll be talking about that and how they can affect the, how they can split the polar vortex. Okay, um, so this graph here is, uh, if you just click on any of these links here, click on any of these graphs, it gives you more details. So I'm looking at one in particular, this guy here. So I've already clicked on it and it brings up this sort of thing. So this is where we are in 2018. So 260, 263, uh, zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin. Okay, so here we are. Um, we should be, you know, 243 or something. This would be, uh, 20, uh, this would be like 34 degrees uh, or 30 odd degrees um, below zero Celsius. Okay, um, so the difference here, this is about 243, this is about 263, 20 degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Now, what did we look at in previous years? Well, you can here click here. This is 2017, we spiked up, but not as high. Remember, we're going up to here this year on day 50 roughly. Um, this is 2017, 2016. So you can notice the warming is here. The warming is here. Okay, there's less warming in the, in the summer. Um, it's in the winter, and it, it's it, it's throughout the winter. So it's in the it's in the spring. Okay, it's in the fall, and it's throughout the winter. Okay, so this is uh, 2016, 2015. 2014. So you can notice the structure in both of those times, 2013, 2012, record sea ice loss year. Okay, so why are these things happening? So uh, like I say, I'm doing a series of videos, so stay tuned.